what is an autodidact? I've talked about this a lot. There's lots of videos on this, but let's actually do a search for what it is. What, uh, whoops, if I could type, what is an autodidact? Now I have my ideas about what it is, but you guys go look it up. An autodidact is a self-taught person who learns without formal education or instruction. Learn the etymology. I always conf confuse that with entomology, which is the study of bugs. <laughs> Not the same thing. Learn the etymology, history, and examples of this word from the Merriam-Webster Dictionary. All right, so uh, ooh, there's another good one. Uh, Tado Ando is a famous autodidact architect of the 21st century. Many successful and influential architects, blah, blah, blah were self-taught so i guess i turned that off but here you go there's there's where the 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 information comes from um an autodidact is more than a self-taught learner and really the takeaway from this video is is that as an autodidact is someone who goes the extra length of time extra mile whatever and rather than just learning on their own um they make a plan so the difference between oh i am an independent learner and an autodidact is an autodidact has a plan that means that they have set aside time for themselves they've they've considered what it is that they need to learn they potentially use time back boxing techniques to focus they like they've you know they they have taken on the task of learning and the why should you become an autodidact because the entire tech industry is driven by autodidactic engineers. These are people who fundamentally, you could argue that you really can't be a good engineer without being someone who's constantly controlling their own learning. And when you go back far enough, you start to see that some of the, the early autodidactic engineers uh, that created, you know, scientists in general, um, there was nothing, there was no other way to learn the things. It's not like you could go open a book or do an internet search or go, you know, go even to somebody else. You couldn't even cross the sea and talk to a specialist about a thing because it didn't exist. So, so, you know, whether, whether it's, you know, quantum theory, you know, Niels Bohr, or it's like, you know, you know, it's uh, electricity with Tesla or any of these people. They invented these things because there was no other way to learn about them. They had to set up. So, so autodidacticism, I think that's a word, goes hand in hand with um, that scientific entrepreneurialism, uh, which, I, yes, I do think that they go together, where you're constantly finding a new way. Uh, we talked about the virtues of IT and and you, know, you can go watch that video, but they are in sync with all of this, right? People want a thing and they, they want their life to be easier. They, they, they want to fix a problem that they have. And so they set about the, you know, the, the work of making a plan to make the thing and to doing what it takes to get it. That is what it means to be an autodidact. Um, there is another way of saying this, and I, I use it all the time, learn to think like a hacker. And I've talked about that in another video, but autodidact hackers are just engineers auto they're some of the most autodidactic people in the world they they take the idea of a thing and not only do they say okay i want to master that idea but they look at the idea from different angles it's like think outside the box if you want to use a cliche you know they're they're like so far out of the box they're going to make a new box <laughs> i'm going to make a new box here's my box use my box instead or i'm going to you know make it use it for a thing they are naturally autodidactic individuals. Um, quick little story. Uh, if you, if you, if you've ever been with somebody who's not an, so I had somebody that I used to work with. Let me, let me tell you, so I'm going to tell you two stories about people who are autodidactic and people who are not. Okay. One of them is my wife and the other one is somebody who shall not be named. Okay. And this is why I hate cubicles. So I was, I was working, uh, in a cubicle at a particular company. I will not say which one. And, there was this person um, who was always asking me questions. They were like, I mean, seriously, sometimes they would even ask, hey, man, what time is it? Or, hey, man, what's the weather like? I'm like, literally, you can Google. Let me Google that for you, which, by the way, is a really funny website. I'm not going to do it now. But um, so, you know, they could they could go about the business of doing all their own research, but they didn't. 
you know, and they had no desire to do so. They were constantly in my cubicle all the time, haunting my cubicle door, going, what am I going to do? Uh, how am I going to get help with this? And, but you know, when I tell this story, I have to be careful because sometimes being a, a responsible IT person is owning the fact that you do not know the answer, right? And you need to get help and you need to go to your learning community, your professional learning community, which we'll talk about in another video. And you need to build up that community to go to them and say, look, I, this is the work I have done to try to answer this myself. Make sure you do that work first and the research. And here's where, what I'm still missing, or maybe you make a conclusion and then you get it validated. Again, all of that is going to be discussed in the personal professional learning network. That's a really important conversation. I don't want to take away from that. So if, you know, I don't want to say whatever thou shalt not leave your cubicle and go talk to other people. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is don't be intellectually lazy. And I was going to make, it might be actually, that might be the, that might be the thumbnail intellectual laziness. I have no time for intellectual laziness. Intellectual laziness are people who are not dumb. They're just lazy. And they're not lazy in a good way. They're lazy in the way that they want somebody else to do just the thinking for them because they're just too lazy to do it. And they can write their own tool and do the... So an autodidactic, does it, an autodidactic person not only does their own research and leans on their own understanding first before they go lean on somebody else, uh, but you know, they, they have a sort of an, you know, they have sort of a, an aversion for the kind of person who's going to haunt your door and ask you really stupid things. And Hey, I got this thing, you know, and, uh, if you, if you work in technology for any amount of time, you'll know that there are people who have like lesser social skills who will not put up with that. And, um, so one of the reasons I want to teach you about this autodidactic thing is I want to save you from and this, and I'm gonna. I have another story to tell you. I'll end on a positive note, but I have another story to tell you about people who are not autodidactic, people who do not set up, set about to to learn their own, to answer their own problems, and 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 you know, let alone a plan for how to learn, you know, an entire technology or language or something. Another place is in the chat rooms. In the chat rooms, uh, and I specifically have had experience with IRC, but people who the equivalent of, of that they they go from you know, one cubicle to another, they go into an IRC room that's got a fact about all the answers and they ask the question anyway, and they get roasted by the people that are in there and, and they really let them have it. And then like, you guys suck. You guys are all mean. Why are you, could have just answered the question? Why didn't you just answer it instead of letting me have it? You know, it could have taken 10 minutes. And by the way, I'm guilty of this. So four years ago in 2020, when I started streaming to Twitch, I have a personal habit with the people that I mentor of shaming them a little bit when they ask me a question they could have answered themselves because I have no tolerance for intellectual laziness and frankly, smacking down somebody that I'm helping to, to learn and grow um, a little bit so that it stings, not, not too much, but so that it stings enough for them to realize, damn, you know what, you're right, I could have got my answer this myself. I need to do that. You need to do that because people have become, particularly entitled people, people who have a lot of money, uh, I don't, it's not just rich people hate. That's not what I'm doing, but I have dealt with people who've come to me and like, you're the teacher. You're supposed to know. Tell me what I'm supposed to know. It's like, you can figure this out. Have you even attempted to figure it out on your own? Well, no, because I don't know how. Yeah. But how are you going to find out how? Well, you're the teacher. You're supposed to tell me that kind of attitude does not fly in it or science. The idea that you cannot learn for yourself, it's just unsustainable. It's completely unsustainable. So you need to train yourself to be able to get that answer. And by the way, the next time somebody comes to you about this, you don't need to be, sorry for my bad language, a dick about it. But And, and I have been. I definitely have been. I, I, I got a reputation on Twitch as being just an asshole because random Twitch people who are so full of dopamine addiction and instant gratification, they would come in. This is a true story. They would come into my streams. They still do it to this day. There is big white letters on the top of the screen that tell my location on the bike down to the city with the exact temperature and everything. And you know what they ask me in the chat? Where is he? 
where is he writing? Does somebody know where he is? And then my mods are like, please look in the upper left corner of the screen. And they're like, oh, <laughs> I'm not kidding. That is like that is like the epitome of the opposite of autodidactic thinking. Not even spending a second to think about how could I answer this question for myself, right? And I'm telling you right now, whether or not you get smacked down and sent to, let me Google that for you, which is hilarious, by the way. You can, if somebody posts a thing, you can go to let me Google that for you and put the question and then send it to them <laughs> as the answer. And it will actually animate them using Google to get their own answer. Somebody who is too lazy to Google it for themselves. Um, so, <laughs> so don't be the person who's too lazy. Be the, don't be the person who, who goes, you know, walks across the, you know, the entire building in some cases, just to ask you a stupid question that they could have researched on their own or that they could have figured out. Don't, don't be that person but, and, and understand that those persons exist. Um, and then well, we'll end on the happy note. So let me tell you a story about one of the most intelligent, most dedicated autodidacts I have ever known. I happen to marry her. In fact, I think that it might be that she is such an autodidactic human being that I have come to just really appreciate her at a core level. And there's something to be said about this. So my wife is an artist and my wife, my wife's brain is not in one category. She, she does sculpture. She does fine art. She's been called the greatest figure drawer and drawing, drawing artist in our region by another highly acclaimed artist. She's extremely talented. She's just, she's in her third book. She's got, she's got art in Austria showing. She had her own gallery show with the ambassador to Germany or the German ambassador to America. I mean, she, she's the real deal. And, and I really appreciate art. I'm, I, I like to do graphic art and things like that myself, but, but something about artists is that they have figured out, and this is where the, the, the clicking, clicking in connection between creativity and autodidactic nature comes in, right? Because science at its, at the core is a creative pursuit as well, because the formulation of a hypothesis, a theory, um, and, you know, the execution and the imagination and the visualization of that thing, those are all highly creative processes. And as we all know, most people who pursue art as a career, they are already highly creative. And so they learned, you know, and my wife is particularly good at that because she's regularly mixing. She's not a mixed media artist, but she's regularly mixing influences from one area into another one. So she's seeing, you know, she's doing something with printmaking and, and line cut and stuff. And she sees that she can add that an element of sculpture to it or something. And she just regularly finds it. Well, so here's the best part of the story. So she was making a piece where it was a, it was a sculpture of a bunny and it was like supposed to be um, all messed up and stuff. And when you touched it, she wanted it to say something. So my wife set about learning C programming <laughs> for herself <laughs> on her own in her own way and she she coded the hardware device uh to play upon uh, touching it and everything it was it was uh it ended up being an arduino and i the details are irrelevant but she she took it on and it was so funny because i remember um her going through it and she's like man some of these youtube tutorials on c are really bad and i'm like you think <laughs> And so, I mean, so here's this artist, you know, who took it upon herself to teach herself C. I mean, she learned it so well that she was actually able to use her thing to do a demonstration to a class that I was having where um, uh, she and, and, and her, her partner in crime was working on it. They actually had alligator clips tied to a piece of uh, aluminum foil and, and they had written this code that changed the frequency coming through the speaker so that these kids could like, you know, play different things by just moving their finger on, on the aluminum foil. And, and she learned all of that herself. She learned the electronics herself. She learned the coding part herself. She made the sculpture herself, you know, to contain the thing. And I am just blown away to the, to this day, I am blown away by my wife. And as busy as we are and, and all the things that might happen to somebody who's been married for, you know, almost 10, more than 10 years, um, you know, we, I always have that. And, and I, one of the things about her that I really love is that she's just 
so completely, totally autodidactic by how, about how she approaches everything. And we'll sit there and sip coffee and we'll complain about all the people in the world who are not autodidactic. <laughs> we try not to be too negative, but we're like, yeah, can you imagine not being able to answer your own questions? Can you imagine having to like depend on someone else to teach you something? Oh, it must be so exhausting. <laughs>